This is a peristaltic pump. This model is, is a C15. Uh, we have nine models. They go from a C10 all the way up to a C150. And in production, we're working on making a dual C150. It's the largest we have. Um, I'll just run this for you and show you how it works. Basically inside there is a hose. There's two rollers. They squeeze the hose. They push the material out, which makes a vacuum behind and draws it in. I'll just run it. Now you can see the rollers moving around. This is how the C15 works. And this is basically how all the pumps work. I'll show you a pump later that's larger and it's the same principles. This pump here is a C150. This is the largest pump that we produce, manufacture. Um, it's kind of a mystery because you just see where it product comes in, product goes out, but you don't know how it functions. So if we go over to this pump, this is our C100. You can see that it's basically the same configuration of what we saw on the C15. It consists of two rollers, a rotor, and the hose. And this again squeezes the hose. So we'll fire this up and we can show you how this runs. C100 in action. We've got the cover off just for demonstration purposes. Obviously you don't want to run um, this with the cover off. The cover is actually an integral part of the pump, but we do run them this way when we're testing them and you can see how it works. This is running very slow. Generally they go a little bit quicker. These spin around up to 30 uh, RPM. What I like to just talk about is the difference of a traditional pump to a peristaltic pump. Traditional pump, commonly known as the centrifugal pump, has a rapid moving impeller and throws the material, creating pressure. These pumps don't work that. They're slow moving. They only go up the maximum we have these is 30 RPM. And the reason they work is because how much pressure they can hold back. So if you have a high pressure in your line, it's how much is squeezing this hose that stops it from going past here and pushing it forward. And that's basically how much you can hold back. So we will set it up for a low pressure, high pressure, whatever the customer wants, whatever the application is, it's dependent on how much you're squeezing that hose. If you squeeze it too much, the pump will still work. However, you're just, it's like overpressure tires. You're wearing out your hoses prematurely if you run them at the proper pressure. So basically the difference is, this is always a closed system. It will never have open. Like once you stop this pump, the product stops. And basically it's how much it can resist the pressure in the line. I'd like to mention one more um, advantage of a peristaltic pump. And that is the fact that it is a hose. Therefore, whatever you're pumping in, if it's toxic, if it's just bad stuff, it all is self-contained. So it's inside the cell. A centrifugal pump basically has an impeller. The material goes through that. It's in the bearings and everything. This material doesn't touch anything except inside of the hose. It doesn't touch the bearings, doesn't touch the rollers, bushings, nothing. It's all in there. Very good advantage for that. Uh, I'd like to talk about whether you can draw in for the pump from the top or the bottom. These run in any direction. Um, one of the beautiful things is when you draw in the pump in, should you get blockage here, you can just reverse it push the material out. However, a lot of question is, do you want to pump in from the top or do you want to take it in from the bottom? A lot of people just automatically go to the bottom. We recommend that you draw it in from the top. The reason being is, if you're drawing in your material and you stop the pump here, when you start it up again, it goes this way, which is good because the material will build up in here. If you were going this way and it stops here, all your sediment will settle in here. It'll be a big lump, and this roller has to get over the lump. So what I like to do is just show you, in a simple terms with a tube, what's actually going on. So I just wanna try and do a simple demonstration of what I mean about the media building up here in front of the roller. So if you can imagine your material is in your, in your hose, and you stop the pump here, and what happens is it builds up. And now you've got to try and get the roller to go over that material. So it's got to squeeze it, push it. It's very difficult. If it goes this way, 
And I'll just demonstrate here. It's just like opening it up and they just start flowing. So that's the reason why we like to draw in from the top because you avoid the material, if it should stop in this position, you avoid the material building up and settling in here and it's difficult for the pump to get over that bump of material. All right. Like talk about, it's just when people are connecting their pumps, to make sure that they have a direct line going into the pump on both intake and outtake or output. Um, reason being is anytime you have bends in there, it doesn't flow that well. So if you take a, a pipe and you have a nice curve in it, the material can flow quite nice. But if you put in a 90 degree bend, basically you're restricting the flow and it really plays havoc with the pump. So if you have to put any bends in here, put two 45s bends or a nice long radius bend and that will really help the flow of the material out of the pump.